Welcome back. Time now for Rising from the Vault. A look back into our archives to dust off something old you may not have seen before. With all the success of winning the Western Conference Championship a year ago and playing for the USL Cup, the Phoenix Rising are in an even bigger battle behind the scenes, trying to make it to the big leagues of MLS. A year ago, Team 12's Bram Resnick sat down with co-owner Tim Reister to tackle the team's biggest issues. And you know there are a lot of cynics out there. This is not an American game. It's too slow. There's not enough scoring. Uh, it just won't work here. And yeah. for, it's been, it's had so much potential for so many years. When does that moment come when it just makes it? Well, it's already working. So we launched Phoenix Rising FC just about one year ago. Um, and we had 16 home games last year, and we sold out 10 of those home games with a stadium that didn't have any cooling technology. Um, we've had two home games so far for the start of our 2018 season, and we've sold out both of those. Now, arguably, our stadium's still small, so is it fair to say, oh, that means that it's, it's gonna explode here? Well, Atlanta launched a major league soccer team playing in Division I one year ago, and everybody thought Atlanta probably wouldn't be a great soccer market. People were wondering why MLS expanded there. And they're enjoying average attendance of 70,000 fans per game. Arizona should be a better soccer state than Georgia with the amount of Hispanic soccer fans we enjoy here. We have hundreds of thousands of kids who are currently enrolled in youth soccer programs so their families understand the sport and have a new enjoyment for it. There are more kids playing soccer in this state than all the other sports combined. This is one case where you guys don't want any of our money, yeah. which is very unusual. Well, it'd be, it'd be very helpful, um, but we didn't ask for it. But we know the citizens of the state have given so much to help professional sports historically. Um, and we think that if, if we needed to ask them for that kind of assistance, we just couldn't achieve where we need to go. How much time do you have to really to get a franchise in MLS? I actually believe we have quite a bit of time because I think MLS wants Phoenix, and I think they're definitely going to eventually come to Phoenix. And if you think like the owners of MLS, their sponsors want a market of this size, it doesn't make sense for their league not to have the largest city in the entire United States with the most television viewing households not currently in their league. If you look at every unit of measure for their evaluation and all the cities that are competing, Phoenix is number one across every single item. The stadium plan that we've shared with you and with the soccer fans of Arizona has already been approved by MLS. That was number one. Number two, you have to have, and this is kind of a fun, people will laugh when they hear this one. You have to have a billionaire in your cap table of your ownership group. Exactly. And we didn't have that. So fortunately for Phoenix and fortunately for Arizona, a fabulous entrepreneur named Alex Tsung from China made an investment in our organization to help us get to MLS. So and he is the billionaire. He's, he, and he's so much more than that. The guy is so smart. He understands this sport. He understands business. He's a self-made man. He started a company in China to create unique hotel experiences and currently owns 4,400 hotels. Not hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. 4,400 hotels. Just to give you the idea of scale, uh, he knows how to grow business. He's already been to two of our, our matches this year. He'll fly in from China to watch the game. He's that committed to the team. If MLS awarded you a franchise tomorrow, that's correct. could you start construction next week on this land that's for a correct. new stadium? That's correct. You have title or whatever you need uh, legally to do that? We are two weeks away from turning the first shovel on this land if we choose to stay on this land to build the stadium. We have the ability to stay here in this location where we are today for 70 years. We're, we're two years into a 70 year arrangement, um, but at the end of five years, we have the opportunity to move to a different facility if we think that would be better for the stadium. This is truly the best location in our minds for us to be. We're right at the junction of the 101 and 202, but it may make sense to have uh, training facilities in some of these other areas. So we're looking at all the opportunities available to the team now. We are sorely in need of more grass throughout the valley for soccer, for soccer fields. 
uh, all the people Wait, for, for youth soccer. You yeah, mean, or just all, for... the people watching your show who have kids or grandkids playing youth soccer know what I'm talking about. Green grass for soccer is in higher demand. Green grass is gold in this town for soccer because there's just not enough of it. So one of our missions, we want to build 20 fields as a part of a training facility, not only for our team and for our youth academy, but to help kids around the community. We, we want kids seven days a week on our fields learning to love this beautiful game of soccer.